welcome students to lesson one of um, let's say, opa, lesson 15 okay of the year three science class we are going to talk about bacteria okay Be grateful for the good and the bad um, so it, before we start in the topic of bacteria okay I was I was asking Maria to see if she could share with us uh, <clears throat> some of the things that, that you have learned here about uh, elect scanning electron mic microscopes. Okay. Okay, Maria. Okay, sorry. Um, yep. So from from the video, I learned that that some um, bacteria, well, and organelles are very, very extremely small that you can't really use a normal microscope because they wouldn't show up. And an electric microscope uses beams of moving electrons to see an image, and it uses it magnifies three hundred thousand times the size of the object that the scientist or someone that is studying. And it also shows like um, a diagram or like how the um, electric um, the electron microscope works. And so how it works is it there's a thermonic cathode that um, that that's used to create the electron beam, and it's heated by um, electric currents. So it'll um, um, make a beam that'll go to the an the anode, which is connected with positive, to source the thermonic cathode. And through the anode, it'll also um, go to the electromagnet lens that will go onto the cover plate where the specimen is um, is to make the image, and it'll have. To make the image, they also have an, a secondary electron detector that will um, get the tiny images to make the image. And it also has, after they have the image, they have an X-ray detector that can show them, like the inside the atom. Um, and. Well, let's see there, the X-ray detector. I'm going to get to that. Yeah, let's see there. Okay, aha, uh -huh, it's getting there. Go ahead, keep going. Um, and in the ad, like it was showing a diagram of the atom, and it was saying that there are three okay. shells. The smallest, mm -hmm. where the nucleus is inside, is called the K shell. The next one is the L shell, and the biggest is the M shell. And the prime, there will, a primary electron will come along, and it will knock out a another electron from the K shell, and then the um, electron will be replaced uh, with a very unstable electron. But the um, the M shell will repair itself. Will repair the K shell by having another electron come in to repair itself because it's like the repairing one. And something else I forgot to say is like when the electron is knocked out of the K shell, when it comes unstable, it has it get an X-ray photon characteristic like yeah X characteristic X-ray photon to to show the X-ray image. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And, and that characteristic X-ray uh, is used by the scientists to do what? So the, the, the X-rays that are shown here as this wavy line, okay, they are detected by this X-ray detector, okay, and then what do the scientists are able to do with that? You know? I um, they can see like what the on the video she like pulled up a periodic table and she could see like what the if the gold was actually um, genuine. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it actually shows the percentage, for example, AU here is for gold, okay, and it shows the percentage of gold in different parts of the sample, okay, and then if you are able to actually identify the composition of the different materials. AG here is for silver, okay, you know, CU is copper, so you are able to see the signatures of the different elements so you actually are able to see uh, what elements are in the sample, okay? In this case, you know, copper, silver, and, and gold. Mm -hmm. Okay. How is that useful? What do you think? Um. I'm not sure. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, so um, let me give you a, an example, okay? Um, my, my bishop is actually a an, an chemical engineer and he has an electron microscope in his house, okay? <laughs> it's really, really cool. And so he has one of these microscopes and a couple of years ago, my daughter was doing a science fair experiment and the experiment that she did was to get samples of sandstone from different parts of Utah, you know, like from southern Utah and from Spanish Fork and another area. And then we were able to see through the microscope these samples and see if they were similar or different. Was the sandstone the same, okay, or was it different? And it turned out that by doing this a spectral analysis, okay, we could see that the elements that compose the sandstone were kind of different from one sample to the next. Most of it was silica, okay, because that is, you know, silicon is the, the, the main material of sandstone, all right, but there was one sample that had more gold and other minerals than the other sample. So the samples were not the same, okay? So if you put a bacteria under the electron microscope, you would be able to actually also see what is the, you know, the cell wall of the bacteria made of, okay? And so when we study these organisms, um, we say, oh, the, the composition of the cell membrane is this or the composition of the ribosome is that, one of the ways that scientists are able to do that is because they do here an analysis of what are the elements that compose that particular thing that they are seeing under the microscope. Okay, isn't that cool? I think it's cool. <laughs> Okay. All right. Maria, are you still there? I am. Okay. All right. Do you anything else that you would like to tell us? Mm -hmm. Um Well. <laughs> you did very well. Very good up here. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't think I have anything else. Okay. Okay. So these electron microscopes are really fantastic, okay, because they, they really can get down to the molecular level, okay. They are able to, to, to really help us see things at the most elemental level. It's really, really amazing, okay. So that is the type of microscope that we need in order to see this, this thing, okay. Thank you very much, Maria. And now we are going to go to, to the, 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 the part of the lesson, the academic concept, and we'll give the time now to Anna for, for that. Okay? She has okay. volunteered for okay. us. Mm -hmm. um, kind of low, but we can. Okay, is this better? 
much better. Yes. Okay. Right. Hmm? All right. So um, this academic concept is bacteria are prokaryotic cells that can help us in harvest. And before this lesson, I hadn't really thought of bacteria as being helpful. You know, you think of bacteria as being germs, sickness, bad stuff. But I thought it was interesting that there's actually good bacteria. Um, so from this academic concept, I learned that bacteria are prokaryotic cells. So they don't have a membrane-bound nucleus. They do have a nucleoid, though, that contains their DNA. Um, mm -hmm. They don't have organelles. They just have ribosomes. Um, mm -hmm. They're also a lot smaller than eukaryotic cells are. Um, in one of the videos, it compared um, like a prokaryotic cell would be like the size of that box on your screen there for the video, mm -hmm. and then a eukaryotic cell would be like us, so we're like ten times larger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I also learned that um, these bacteria, they have a cell wall of peptidoglycan. I think I pronounced that right. Mm -hmm. And yep. they're in mm -hmm. a capsule shape. Um, mm -hmm. They also um, they have these little hair-like things on the outside that help them to grab onto materials. And they also help a little bit with the movement. But most of the movement mm -hmm. from, comes from the flagellum. A little tail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And notice that these pili, okay, these little hairs on the flagellum are really kind of extensions of the cell membrane. Do you oh, see yeah. that? Okay. Oh, I didn't notice that. So, mm -hmm. so they are basically, you know, kind of pointy things coming out, but they are made of cell membranes, so it is a, the same phospholipid bilayer, you know, the same oh, cool. one. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Yeah, very, very important. What is the capsule? What is the capsule? Do you, do you remember hearing what, he, what uh, Mr. Anderson said about the capsule here in the video? Like what's, what it's made out of? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. Is that's not the part that's made out of peptidoglycan, is it? No, the, that is the cell wall. Okay, the cell wall is the peptidoglycan. Okay, and that okay. is kind of a very tough uh, membrane. All right, it is really a wall. Mm -hmm. The capsule is just, you know, it's kind of like a, a mucus, all right? It's kind of like a semi-liquid gel surrounding the bacteria. Oh. And it's made out of all the enzymes and the things that the bacteria secrete right in around its own environment, both to protect it and also to help it digest things and bring things in and out. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a jelly type of uh, thing. It, it, you know, it would be comparable to a force field. Okay, yeah. surrounding the bacteria to protect it, to separate it from the, the rest of the environment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Keep going. Okay. Um, so also from the video, um, Bacteria, they do basically, I think I said, every kind of metabolism. So they're phototrophs, so they eat light or use light to create food. Um, they're lithotrophs, they eat inorganic material like chemicals. And they're mm -hmm. organotrophs, so they eat like plants and organic material like that. Mm hmm. Yeah, like us. Okay. Yeah. We are also organotrophs. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I guess they reproduce by binary fission. So they kind of grow to half their size and they split and create another identical bacteria cell. And then mm -hmm. those two split, 
creating more, and then it keeps multiplying. Mm -hmm. And what is one of the characteristics here of the, the binary fission? What, what have, you know, how, how much uh, alike or different are the, the daughter cells? Um, they're exactly the same, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. That is one of the characteristics of bacteria. Mm -hmm. How fast can they do it? Um, I think the video said in like 20 minutes, like really fast. Very fast. Excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else does the video talk about, or what else do you remember about uh, bacteria? Let's see. Bacteria, I guess it can be in lots of different shapes. So uh -huh, it can yeah. so, okay. be like in little circles, spherical chains. Um, it can be in kind of like sausage links, hot dogs shaped. Mm -hmm. um, that could mm -hmm. be like the E. coli in the intestine. Mm -hmm. um, it can also be spiral, kind of like a balloon that's twisted. Um, just lots of different shapes. Yeah. Uh huh. So it is interesting in this in this uh, um, graph. It shows kind of the different shapes and then the names. Okay. And then the the, the bacteria are generally named by identifying the shape. Okay. And then some other characteristic. Okay. okay. So that is kind of how they are named. So. You know, if you see, you know, um, someone has a streptococcus, what does that mean? It means that they have an infection of the streptococci, all right? So they are brown bacteria that are all, you know, kind of in a, in a line, all right? So mm -hmm. streptobacilli, the bacilli are the rods, okay, you know. Cocobacillus are the ovals and so on. So, and, and then depending on how what a shape do they have, that is kind of what they they are named. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember what he meant here when he was when Mr. Anderson was explaining about the gram positive and gram negative? Um, that part was a little bit confusing. It sounds like they dyed bacteria um, mm -hmm. in order to see it better, and the way it um, showed up, that's how they kind of classified it. That's right, yes. Uh -huh. So the name of the dye, the coloring agent that they use is Gram. Okay. 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 So the bacteria that do not react to the dye that don't get any color are the gram negative. And the bacteria that react to the coloring that actually show up, like they show up here in this video, in this picture, they are gram positive. Okay? And the dye is actually a dye that reacts with the peptodo peptodoglycan uh, cell wall. All right? Okay. So, so if the bacteria has a has the cell wall outside, then it's gram positive, and it can be seen easily. Some bacteria have another membrane after the wall, after the the cell wall of the glycan. They have another cell membrane outside, and so the the dye doesn't. Uh, affect them, you know, doesn't get to the peptidoglycan, and so they, yeah. they are the gram negative. Okay. Are the gram negative um, bacteria the more dangerous ones? Yes, uh -huh. and the reason for that is that most antibiotics, and remember that the 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 antibiotics are like the penicillin, is an enzyme that is. Uh, produced by by yeast by fungi, okay, and the the penicillin enzyme attacks the peptidoglycan. 
okay? okay. And so the, the penicillin, what happens is that it, it uh, attaches here to the cell wall of the bacteria, it breaks the cell wall, and then the bacteria kind of explodes, okay? Mm. And then the, the fungi can eat the bacteria, all right? That okay. is basically how antibiotics work. The gram-negative bacteria, the, the, the same reason why the, the gram dye cannot get to the peptidoglycan, the penicillin or the antibiotic cannot get to the peptidoglycan either here. And so these, these bacteria are a antibiotic resistant. Okay. Okay. And so we cannot kill them easily. So that's why they are not here. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like a All different right. anti is there a different antibiotic that can get through that extra? There are some yeah, there are some that can, okay. Um, but one of the you know, there's two problems that, that we have. One problem is that some bacteria that are gram positive uh, after being attacked by uh, by antibiotics they start developing the characteristics of gram-negative bacteria and they start kind of, you know, growing another cell membrane outside and then they are antibiotic resistant, okay? Okay. So that is why it's important not to take antibiotics willy-nilly because then you could uh, you know, start developing a strain of bacteria that is antibiotic resistant. Okay. That would be bad. That would be bad, yeah, because now that antibiotic doesn't work anymore. You have to find a different antibiotic. So it is always kind of a race between the, the evolution and the changes that bacteria have and, and, and present and the 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 making of new antibiotics, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Were you able to see uh, this video, the video on the tech talk? How bacteria yeah, I was. Talk? Mm -hmm. Okay. What did you get from that uh, video? Um, kind of, I thought it was interesting how bacteria can communicate with each other. Kind mm -hmm. of, and mm -hmm. work together to either help your body or cause problems, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess in this video they were talking about a specific kind of bacteria that they had discovered, um, and how when it's grouped together it glows, because it sends out these signals that um, can detect whether there's a whole bunch of bacteria together. And then it, once it figures that out, it starts to light up, whereas by itself it doesn't produce any light. That's right, yeah. Uh -huh. And it's all kind of, a, they talk, but it's basically like a chemical talk, okay? They share information chemically that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. J Jacob is asking a, a very interesting question. He's asking, uh, do some bacteria mutate? Are all bacteria of the same type, or are they different? Okay, what do you what do you think? Do are are all bacteria the same, or are they different? Well, there's different species of bacteria, but they all mm -hmm. have the basic components of a prokaryotic cell. That's right. So they are all prokaryotic. Okay, they all have kind of the same basic component. The difference in the characteristics is uh, mostly, you know, we saw the differences in shape, then we saw the differences in the gram positive or gram negative and what that means, okay? And uh, also the bacteria have sometimes different genetic information, okay? Jacob here also, I guess, they want, he wants to say something. So go ahead, Jacob. Actually, when I asked that question, I meant, um, do the same species of bacteria sometimes mutate into a different 
slightly different strain because I know that viruses, to avoid your immune system, will every once in a while mutate and create a new virus that the immune system is not tagged yet and looking for. Do bacteria do the same thing, or are all the bacteria of a species exactly the same? I didn't mean like all of them together. Mm -hmm. Anna, what do you think? Great question. Mm -hmm. um, I think that bacteria can mutate. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, uh, they do mutate, okay, and let me, you know, remember when we were talking here about how the bacteria, um, you know, divide by binary fission, okay, mm -hmm. here in this part of the, of the lecture, Mr. Anderson explains how when the bacteria divide in binary fission, how these changes may happen. Okay, so for example, they, 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 they duplicate the DNA, okay, but then the bacteria have these plasmids that are just short uh, genes of DNA, okay, and so, and those are kind of easy to change, easy to mutate, and sometimes when when the bacteria divide, the plasmid ends, you know, a certain type of plasmid ends up on one side of the bacteria and not on the other or something like that. So that would be kind of a change, a mutation, all right? Okay, Sometimes, thanks. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to go. So sometimes also these uh, strands of DNA can, can change and make some little change in the, in the gene that now the bacteria is going to be able to make a protein a slightly different or something like that. Uh, Mr. Anderson also explained here that sometimes viruses inject the viral DNA and can cause a mutation in the DNA of the bacteria, okay? And so there are some, there are quite a few ways uh, by which bacteria can, can change and mutate, okay? So, so yeah, it is, it, they, they do mutate. So the speed of, of mutation, it is still a slow, all right, but imagine that if they divide so fast, the mutations can become significant, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see, let me see. Okay, let we talk about this. Oh, do you, in, in here in the, in the talk, um, on the, the bacteria talking, and um, Anna, did you catch the part where the scientist was talking about what her lab was doing? Okay, as far as let's see, maybe if I can go there. Come on, come on. Okay, um. She was explaining, okay, that they build, you know, she was explaining the communication pathways here for the bacteria. Okay, let me see if we can go, we can go somewhere. There, okay, so let's stop it here, all right. And so she was saying that the, the, the bacteria have a signal mechanism to detect the, you know, enzymes within the same species and also to detect enzymes among all bacterial species. So this will be enzymes that are shared by every bacteria around, okay? And so in her lab, what they did is they were trying to block the communication of the, of the bacteria by, by putting out, you know, by basically giving in the, in the culture of bacteria something that 
could have the same shape, but it was not exactly the same thing. So it didn't trigger the reaction of the, the bacteria, okay? Yeah. It neutralized the, the conversation, basically, all right? So I thought that that was very, very uh, important. And that was, she described it as a new approach to antibiotics. So when you were asking, you asked me about, you know, are there different types of antibiotics for the gram-negative bacteria? Well, this approach, you know, could be very promising in uh, helping us to to create, a, you know, the, to stop the, the, the reproduction and the, the attacks of very virulent bacteria. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Good deal. Okay. What are some of the good things that bacteria can do? Um, it sounds like bacteria is kind of like a protective force for our bodies. It keeps out a lot of bad things from the environment. Um, mm -hmm. It also helps us to digest our food, which is very important. Um, it I thought it interesting that there's a type of bacteria that lives in cow's stomachs that helps them to digest the, all the cellulose that they eat, which is why yep, they can mm -hmm. eat like, grass and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. They also make vitamins, they help break down dead plants and animals, and they turn them back into soil. Um, they also make cheese and yogurt and sausage and pickled foods, I guess. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. <laughs> Um, and then it also sounds like that um, they can teach our immune systems to keep bad things out. And basically they help us stay alive, kind of. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, in fact, really, the, the, our, our world would be quite different without the help of bacteria. Okay. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I found that that was that was really interesting. Here we have some uh, pictures done by an electron uh, scanning microscope of different bacteria and and and, and so on. So uh, really, these are quite interesting images. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I want you to, to invite everyone to look at these images and then you can read the description here of, of what they, they are, okay, here at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we were talking about bacteria being everywhere pretty much, mm -hmm. uh -huh. all right? <laughs> and I found this um, YouTube channel, okay, from a dentist, Carey uh, O'Reilly, and he has some videos that I found that were very, very interesting. Okay, um, and I, I'm going to to play a couple of these. We may have some questions in the quizzes about about this, and see what what happens. So let's see if we can watch uh, one of these videos. So here. What we are seeing is this is this is a sample of a plaque, okay, gathered from the mouth of a patient, okay. So this is the type of um, bacteria and substances that are in all of our mouths, all right. I'm not I'm not uh, sharing this to uh, <laughs> gross you out <laughs> or anything like that. But it is kind of to, to share some of the, the information there. And um, these uh, little things that are moving, they are spirochet colonies of bacteria. All right. Um, so there are also amoebas here, okay, and white blood cells that are here. And then you see the colonies of the spirochet bacteria that are eating the rest of food that stays in our mouth. Okay? 
So this is what is going on in our mouth. And you see that there are different types of, of bacteria, but most of them are these pyroshed colonies. Okay. Are Let me show bad? you. Mm -hmm. Oh, are those bad bacteria, the spirochets? Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, and the, the, the spirochets are the ones that have this shape. Okay, they are kind of like a course to, okay, these okay. ones here. All right, those are the spirochets. Okay, and there's a couple of other videos that I, I found that was very, very interesting. This one, he shows kind of also a sample of what happens in the mouth when you flush it with a salt a saline solution. Okay, so here he's going to enter the soul, the saline solution, and see the saline solution starts clearing and taking away a lot of the bacteria around. See how it really flows fast. So if you do kind of um, gargles with saline solution in your mouth, that is one way of cleaning your mouth. Okay. Very, very simple. And see that now the, the spirochet bacteria are no longer moving. So they also died uh, quite fast because of the failing solution. Mm -hmm. The amoeba also died. All right. So this, this one here, they also die with the, with the failing solution. Okay. Let me see if there's another one. That, let's go back a couple of, of screens. And um, da -da 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 -da. oh, this one here. This one uses is using a, 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 a mouthwash basically to show how the, the effect of the mouthwash on the bacteria. All right, so we see all the bacteria here moving and alive, all right, everything. Then in pretty soon he's going to put into the, the sample. Here you have the mouthwash, okay, and you see how the bacteria are reacting, and then they all pretty much literally die. Okay, so that is something that also very easy things that you can do to help reduce these this colonies of bacteria in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Some of them are necessary, again, because they digest food and they are going to recover, okay? Between, between meals and so on, they recover quite uh, fantastically, <laughs> okay? But uh, if you leave them all the way, all the time there, these spirochet colonies will start forming plaque, and, and, and plaque is kind of that capsule that we talk about, you know, the, the, the jelly thing and that surrounds the bacteria and so on, and that it starts kind of building up, and then it starts doing, affecting the, the gum, affecting the, the, the bone of the teeth and so on, so Keeping the mouth clean is a very important thing. Okay. What do you think about that? Okay. So yeah, so the mouthwash the mouthwash kills both the good and the bad bacteria. Okay, so there, there's no uh, way of distinguishing that. All right. Here we see one video that shows how bacteria explode with penicillin. See, that is what I meant that the, the penicillin basically breaks the cell wall of the bacteria and then the bacteria quite literally just explodes. Okay, all right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Kaya is asking a question. Is she she asked the question: Is it important to kill the bad bacteria very often? What do you think, guys? Okay, this is open to to anyone. Okay. 
All right, so that is a very good question. Is it important to kill the bad bacteria very often? What should we do with bad bacteria? Okay, what are some ways to, to prevent getting infected by bad bacteria? Shots. Uh huh. So short vaccines are usually antiviral, okay? So the shots are usually not for bacteria, they are for viruses. And we are going to talk about viruses in next class and, and antiviruses, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Anna, of course, says if it's bad bacteria, then it probably shouldn't be in your body. That's right, okay? So. The, the the issue is that many times we cannot avoid it, okay? They are everywhere. One of the things, there are two things that we need to be careful with, okay? One is to try to maintain as much as possible hygiene, okay? So being clean is not just something neat, but it is really a big difference in the amount of the, these bad bacteria that grow around you and on you and in you, okay? So remember uh, in this talk, all right, when uh, the scientist was talking about the communication of the bacteria, it, it basically she was saying that bacteria do not do much, they don't do something bad until they sense that there are a lot of them. Okay, so if there's just a few of them, it's no big deal, all right? They are not going to attack. But once they, they sense that there's a lot of them by this signal, the, the, the chemical signal, that is when they attack. So one way of, of keeping the bad bacteria at bay is by cleaning and washing and so on, so there they are not that many of them, okay? that you cannot launch an attack. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. Good deal. Are there any other questions? Guys? If not, we are going to now ask Kea to share here the gospel principle with us in the class. Mm -hmm. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Just a uh... Okay, so the gospel principle for today was that ingratitude is like harmful bad bacteria and it can make our spirits ill. Gratitude in all things is the cure. And so the first thing that it was talking about was that um, they asked us to watch this video and I'll just kind of sum it up. But basically it was um, about this man and when he was a little boy, he injured his foot in an accident and he didn't tell anybody about it and the um I don't remember what he hurt it with but the tool of some sort of farming tool it had it was like really rusty and he didn't know but it had a lot of um bacteria and diseases on it and finally his um dad found out about it and he immediately took him to the hospital because he realized that he could get really sick from it and then Brother Clark relates it to how just like there's poisons that attack our bodies, there's um, poisons that attack our spirits as well. And he was talking about entitlement. And it talks about how entitlement is when we like think we deserve something. And um, it made me just think, like, why do we think that since God gave us like everything that we have? And I just think, and then it was talking about how we always need to be grateful in all things. So it made me think, like, we shouldn't be grateful just when things are going our way, but we should be grateful when, like, in hard times as well. Mm hmm Yeah. Very, very important, really. Okay. Um, um, have, you, have you ever been sick? Kaya? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what what happens um, when 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 we are sick? Okay, how can how can we be grateful for 
getting sick? Uh, well, whenever I'm sick, I always like think about how I want to be better, so I always like feel better. So it just makes me like appreciate a healthy body so much more. That's right. Yes. Uh -huh. So being sick really helps us to appreciate health. Okay, mm -hmm. when we are healthy, and and you know, especially that most of the time we are just fine. Okay. That is a, a, a great blessing. Mm -hmm. What else can you learn from being sick? Um, like in what ways? <laughs> mm -hmm. This is a question for everyone. Okay, so if you have been sick, what what are some of the lessons that you learn from uh, from being sick? Mm -hmm. I just thought of one. I don't know if this relates, but um, how like you can be feeling fine one day and then really sick the next day, and it makes me think that like we're not in control of our lives. That we really like God is really in control of everything. And that we just really need to rely on Him. That is a very very important thing, Kaya. Very very important that. Being sick, when when I'm sick, it helps me to realize how much I depend on God for everything, okay, mm -hmm. and especially the things that I kind of take for granted. Mm -hmm. Anna wrote here, it says, I got sick a couple of weeks ago, and I learned that I probably need to go to bed earlier. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. So what is the lesson there? What is the lesson? If I go to, if I don't sleep well, you know, one night, eh, probably I'm okay. But if I keep keep that up for a long time, I invariably get sick. Mm -hmm. So, what is the lesson that that we need to learn from that? Probably, you know, the, the thing that I learned from that is that I need to be moderate in all things. I cannot just go, 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 you know, and, and think that I'm invincible, okay? I need to kind of slow down, you know, and, 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 and rest, okay? Pay attention to, to my body's needs, you know? So, mm -hmm. Jen says, it makes me thankful for medicine. Mm -hmm. Samuel says, uh, to eat healthier. That's right. Once you are sick, okay, you realize how important it is to eat healthier, to be healthy in your, in your diet. Chas says, uh, to remember what we did, not good sometimes. Uh, that's why I think it's better and to be good, okay, so let me see if I understand what, okay, oh, you see, I meant to choose good, not bad, so, so that's right, so when, when we get sick, many times that helps us also to reflect on the choices that we make, okay, it, it helps us to be grateful that we, we need to be making better choices, mm -hmm. Kylie says, I'm sick right now, oh, and I've learned that I need to eat less sugar and stay warm. Oh, I'm sorry, Kaylee. So I hope you get better, okay? And yes, so eating better, resting, keeping our bodies uh, warm and, and uh, well fed, okay, with healthy food and so on. That is one of those things that, that is uh, one of the effects of being sick. Let's see, Anna says, it's interesting how when you are healthy, you don't worry as much about taking care of your body. But when you get sick, you realize that it's very important to take care of your body. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so... Uh, Justin says, what if I get too hot? <laughs> Moderation, Justin. <laughs> okay. So another thing that I've learned from being sick, okay, 
is a, a, also an important lesson. Many times um, after being sick, I develop more compassion and empathy for other people that are sick and or don't have good health, especially those people that have long term sicknesses. Okay. So being being sick, you know, once in a while, okay, fortunately, it helps us to develop that uh, empathy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kaya, do you want to, to elaborate more on that? Um, about like being sick and being grateful or appreciative. Yeah. Um, so I think just we like in our normal lives, we kind of take for granted like the little things. And so like I feel like being sick or not even just being sick, but maybe just having a little hardship like every once in a while definitely just helps us like feel so much more grateful and like, um, not like feel sorry, but feel um, like bad or appreciative to other people that have to deal with those things like for a long time like you might have a financial burden for I don't know just a little while but some people have to deal with it their whole lives or some people have sicknesses their whole life so I think it's just important to be grateful like all the time very very much very much excellent one of my favorite hymns is this one count your blessing Okay, and um, this has been a hymn that has really helped me to, you know, to back up. Okay, in uh, in times when when I'm not feeling well, or or you know when I feel down or in, in unjustly treated. Okay, so this this would be a very good hymn to memorize. To learn by heart, okay. Count your blessing. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite hymn that you like to to sing as an expression of gratitude to God? Anyone? Mm -hmm. Anna also says that she likes I, I count your blessings. Uh huh. Yeah. I I remember singing this one again. Uh, Connor, I am not going to sing. <laughs> okay, I don't know if Connor is here today, but <laughs> I am not going to sing. But I like singing this when I'm alone. <laughs> All right, but it is uh, uh, important to to memorize him. Okay, I also Anna says I also like I will thank the old God for a prophet. That's my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jens regrets that I'm not going to be singing, and that's okay, Jens. Get used to disappointment <laughs> with that. <laughs> What's your favorite him? <laughs> What's your favorite hymn? I like, mm -hmm. I like Lead Kindly Light. Lead Kindly Light. What a beautiful hymn. That is a very, very beautiful one. Excellent. Yes. Uh -huh. Samuel says High on the Mountain Top. That is also a, a very, very good one. Kea says Praise to the Man. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like a prayer of thanksgiving. Oh, liberty says, Oh, my father. That is one of my favorite hymns, Oh, my father. And liberty also says, In our lovely deseret. Excellent. I learned, Oh, my father, when I was a teenager. In Spanish, it was one of the hymns we sang at a, in a war choir, um, and I learned that one by heart. And, and it's one of the hymns that I sing to my children when uh, I put them to sleep. You know, 
So I, I love this one. Oh my God. Beautiful. I also like God Save the King. Which one? Sorry? God Save the King. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ethan says, I like how firm the foundation. Those are, that is also a very, very, very popular one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Well, I think that we have, we have learned quite a bit here about bacteria, okay, and, and how um, uh, to, to, to be grateful, okay. A griffin says, I love a hallelujah. So, do you mean griffin here, the hallelujah chorus of Handel's Messiah? Is that the one that you mean? Okay. Megan says, I like praise to the Lord. Yes. Uh huh. Okay, so they are, Griffin says that they are two, so they are say hallelujah. Oh, you are talking about like the hallelujah that um, Lindsay Sterling just did in, in uh, the, the Mormon.org, you know, that she's playing the violin in New York, that hallelujah. Yeah, I lo like that one. Uh -huh. Samuel says, I like how great thou art. Oh, that is, that is beautiful. Oh, Jen says, I like there is a green hill far away. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Another one okay. of my Savior Redeemer of my soul. Savior Redeemer of my soul. Very, very beautiful. Ryan says, um, I, I, I think to pray. Did you think to pray? Very, very also beautiful, introspective. Uh, Liberty, I stand all amazed. Oh, they, these are, you know, the hymns of Zion are really such a blessing to our lives, and they, they are really, okay. I wish I, we, could, we could have finished with, with a hymn, but, you know, being an online class is kind of hard. Okay, and no, I am not going to sing. <laughs> Liberty also says, sweet hour of prayer. So, who would like to offer a closing prayer for us for for the class? Hmm? Okay. Nathan, would you like to uh, offer a prayer for us? I would love to. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Tell me, Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that we have had to come together as science, talk about the body and what it does, and the bacteria. And please help us to become more like them. Please help us that we can be mindful of missionary opportunities. We know all things come from me. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. All I right, well. Um, Mr. Baldy, what uh -huh. can I do for extra credit? Okay, let me stop the recording.